Good morning and welcome to Church Unlimited White River and Hazy Views online service. A special word of welcome to any first time visitors or anyone visiting our online service. And I want to encourage you and invite you to make contact with us. If you're watching on, on Facebook, if you go to the top of our Facebook page, there is a link where you can say click on send email. Why don't you please click that link and we will get back to you. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, I want you to please go visit our website. If you go to www.churchunlimited.co.za and follow the links to other White River or the uh, Hazy View congregations, and you will get uh, information to make contact with us. As some of you might know, or many might know, um, we have started with our drive in services um, today um, here at the Church Unlimited White River premises, and we're very excited for, for that and for the momentum that, that uh, God has given us in that. And so today's sermon is a recording of the live service um, here at the drive-in. And so if it looks a little bit different from, from the past, it's because it was recorded at the, at the live um, drive-in service this morning. Um, please also note that uh, our kids' ministry will still be continuing online. So for any of those who are wondering, um, you will still find the age-appropriate categories 3 to 7-year-old, 8 to 13-year-old messages and worship every Sunday online until further notice. So uh, please take note of that. Um, then, yeah, we're ready to go into today's message. Um, sit back, take out your notebook, your Bible, and enjoy the message today. God bless. Yeah? Hey? Come on. I don't have to preach into a camera. Well, the camera is there, but it's not just the camera that I'm preaching into. I can't tell you what a relief that is. There are some faces behind the screens, and it is just amazing for me to preach to, to people that are here, actually. We've been through a lot, eh? And we are still going to go through a lot, but the Lord is with us. God is strong. God is mighty. And there is, there is nothing that can stop him from fulfilling his purposes. I just wonder, can I take a sip of water quick? And so, getting to today's word, um, we've uh, been working through the series, Seek First the Kingdom. And Leonis, over the last two Sundays, he's, he's uh, talked about the, the people of the kingdom, that we are a chosen people. Uh, I'll just reference that a little bit later as well. But I want to preach a, a, a sermon, sort of a, a transition sermon, a standalone sermon, um, that I just feel like it's a word the Lord wants to release over us today at this historic event, the first drive-in church service of many. Um, and so the, the title of my sermon today is A New Garment, A New Wineskin, and New Wine. A New Garment, A New Wineskin, and New Wine. And I want to start us off by just reading Romans chapter 8, verse 28. If you wouldn't mind just paging there. As you can hear, nothing has changed. I still ask you if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Please, um, let's, let's turn to Romans 8, verse 28. It's a very well-known verse. Um, over the last couple of months, a verse that was quoted a lot, of, a lot of times. And so, let me read for us. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And so, for us as a church... You can apply that scripture generally to, to Christians and all over the world. You can apply it to local church. You can apply it to individuals. But for us as a local church, what does that mean? And so in the context that, that Paul is writing this letter to the church in Rome, they were going through very tough times, hard times in terms of persecution. Um, they were facing really not just you know imprisonment but death sometimes. And so Paul writes this to a church facing tremendous tough times. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And so 
this speaks to us, to those who have been called according to His purpose, His church. Yes, every individual, but to us corporately, whether Church Unlimited, White River, or YZV, I want to speak into that we are those who are called according to His purposes. We are a chosen people, called by God. There is a purpose with your life. There is a purpose with, the, with our churches. And so for us as a local church, looking at what we have been through, times have been tough. We've, we've never had to adjust. We've never had to be as flexible as we have been over the last couple of months. From our very first online church service, scrambling, learning how to do YouTube channels and Facebook uploads and video editing and lighting and what to wear on the camera when you're on the camera, what not, how to, sp I tell you, it's been rough. And you guys, not used to, you used to come into church on a Sunday, seeing your friends. Now we're segregated, now we're separated. We're all in isolation in our homes. And it's 112 days ago since we've had our last meeting together. And so this is something to celebrate. For me, it's been 125 days because I went to Australia and so on before lockdown. I went into isolation before we came back, before we, I, I could enter into the community. Anyways, so it's 112 days. And we had to learn how to do church and meetings, midweek meetings differently. Our CU groups meeting on Zoom or recording um, vi uh, video messages and posting it on YouTube and encouraging one another on WhatsApp. We've been through a lot. In the last two weeks, we were actually privileged to start meeting at our premises again. Our, our, our small groups started meeting at our premises again, but yet still behind a mask. It's still two meters spaced out from someone else. We've been through a lot, guys. We've learned to appreciate what we always had because we don't have it at this moment. And now we started our first drive-in service, historic event, I tell you. You better be taking pictures and saving these things because we're going to think back of these days in the years to come. Now I want to say to you, church, who are called according to His purposes, in all that we as a church have gone through, God is taking those things and He's working it for our good. Everything that we are wrestling through as a local church, all the things that we with, that we took for granted, everything that we had that we don't have anymore, and the struggles, and it's not easy, and it's not nice. Though God is taking those things, because we are called according to His purposes, and He's working it for our good. In Genesis 50 verse 20, we read about Joseph and how he responded to, to his brothers. Joseph, who was sold by his brothers into slavery. And I think it's 21 odd years that he was in Egypt and he was imprisoned. And, but God raised him up to second in command in, 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 in Egypt. And God used him as an instrument where they, when there was a famine and a drought for seven years to gather grain for seven years before that and so on. And, and then when, when, when Joseph confronted his brothers at the end, he says to them in Genesis 50 verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Many thoughts that all these things that we have gone through would harm the church, would break the church down. But forget that the church is not an institution. The church is not a company. The church is not something established by man. The church is the body of Christ. And that nothing can harm the body of Christ. Nothing will be able to prevent or hinder the body of Christ from growing. Because Jesus Christ himself says, I will build my church. And not even the gates of Hades will prevail against her. What to say about a corona and a lockdown and all that. But in all these things, God is working, working it for the good of us who are called according to His purposes. And I'll get back to that Genesis 50 a little bit later. Won't you please also turn with me to Luke chapter 5. It's from here that I get the, the title for my sermon. And I'll just draw everything, pull everything together towards the end of the sermon. Luke chapter 5 from verse 33 to 39. Pharisees came to Jesus and they said to him, the disciples of John fast often 
and offer prayers. And so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also taught them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But the new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new, for he says, the old is good. And so looking at that passage of Scripture, what is the garment and what is the wineskin? In the context here, Jesus is talking to Pharisees who have been following legalistic traditions and religious things that don't even pertain to the Word of God. They're just traditions that have been handed down, like fasting. These fastings, and we'll read later from from Matthew chapter, from Mark chapter seven about the washing of hands. They had these traditions that they almost worshipped, that they they almost obeyed so strictly as if it was in the Word of God. And so they, by, by, and then they come to Jesus and say, "Well, why don't your disciples fast like the other, like the, the disciples of the Pharisees and of John?" And so what Jesus is, within the context of that passage, is drawing a comparison between the kingdom of God and the way of the kingdom that has now come with Jesus coming to earth and and the, the, the traditious Judaism legalistic way of living. He says there is an old garment, but there is a new garment that's coming. And you can't cut a piece from that old garment and try to put it on the holes of the old garment. You can't, there is new wine coming, guys. The wine of the Spirit. God is going to pour out His Spirit into His church. No longer just here and there, individuals where the Spirit of God comes upon in power for some moments. But God is coming to dwell in and amongst His people. The wine in the wineskin. But you can't, the new wine is coming. But we can't, God's not going to pour that new wine into the old wineskin. You need a new wineskin. Otherwise, the wineskin is going to burst. And so the garment. When, you know when, when you've worn a, a pair of jeans and, and you walk them in and they, they're worn and they sit so nice and comfortable, right? You, and shoes. Shoes sometimes in the beginning, they're uncomfortable and they're stiff and they don't walk so lacquer. But once you've walked in them a couple of months, they're really nice. And then... To, if someone then comes and tells you, you know, throw away your old pair of jeans and give, take this new one, you would say, no, man, this is my favorite pair of jeans. You know, even if it has a hole somewhere, just make sure it's not in a place where someone can see it. I love these jeans. I love to wear these jeans. And so this is what Jesus is saying. Don't just, the, those comfortable jeans that you are wearing, that comfortable garment that you like to wear, it's, I'm not just going to come and put a patch on those holes. I want to give you a brand new garment. That's what Jesus is saying within the context there. It is not about how much of the old garment we can keep. And for God to come and just, okay, God, just I love this garment, but I I agree it's got a couple of holes in it. Won't you then just come and patch where I want you to come patch this garment? Is that what God is asking? Wine skins were made of goat skins or various other animal type skins. New wine was poured into a new wine skin. And as the wine fermented, um, the wineskin stretched as the wine fermented. And so being stretched until it can't be stretched anymore, it it settles then in its shape. It becomes a a shape that won't change anymore. And the word settle speaks of comfort, speaks of I won't change. I like where I am now. I have been stretched before. But that, that has been enough, and I don't want to be stretched anymore. And Jesus was saying that his kingdom is coming by, by the power of the Holy Spirit, filling his disciples, his church. 
And they will be the carriers of the very life, the very presence of God. Now, what are we to hold on to and what should we let go of? If, if we look at ourselves and our context, and you're saying, listen, the old garment must go and the new garment must, must be embraced. The, the old wineskin must go and the new wineskin. What do we let go of and what do we hold on to? I want to read from Mark chapter 7. Verse 1, I'll I'll just read a couple of verses from there. Verse 1, Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. And then verse verse 3 to 4, they continue to explain what that means and what the tradition was. In verse 5, we pick up and it says, And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, they asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but they eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold on to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. In verse 13, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many such things you do. And so these Pharisees were making a scene about something that ultimately was only a tradition handed down from one generation to another generation. There is no scriptural reference of of this cleansing their hands, washing their hands. Um, And so they were troubled that Jesus' disciples weren't holding on to these things anymore. That's what troubled them. They saw that these guys were now holding on to something else. See, the disciples were starting to let go of the old garment. And they were starting to take hold of the new garment. These things that there was tradition and religion that bind them. That there was, there was no life in it, but it was only rules and laws and regulations. And the disciples were in a living, loving relationship with Jesus. They think and they'd hope that God would put some new patch on their old garment, the, the Pharisees. But God loves His church too much to leave her in an old garment. Do you hear that? God loves His church too much to leave her in an old garment, to leave her in an all stretched out wineskin. Hear the word of the Lord. He wants to give her a new garment. He wants to make her a new wine skin that can contain the new wine. So let me get back to Matthew chapter 50. Uh, Genesis chapter 50. Let me read it again. Chapter, uh, verse 20. You intended to, to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. An old garment, a stretched out wine skin, and old wine is nice for me, myself, and I. It's comfortable to wear to walk wear my my, my worn in pair of jeans. It's comfortable to be at last at the place where I've been stretched and now I've been stretched far enough and I don't want to be stretched anymore. It's comfortable only for me, myself, and I. But God knows that the current old garment and the old wineskin won't do. A new garment, a new wineskin, and new wine, as we read there from Genesis 50, is for the salvation of many lives. The old garment, all wine skin, old wine is for me, my comfort, me and I. New garment, new wine skin, new wine is for the salvation of many lives. I see what God is doing, what He is working for the good, is giving His church a new garment, a new wine skin, a new wine, not so that we can go back and be comfortable again, so we can have 
things the way we had it always, but so that God can reach out and save the lost. God is working these things for the good of us. So the, the lost that are out there can come to Jesus Christ through the power of His Holy Spirit in and through His church. Us. That's what God is doing. I don't know about you, but I see a massive harvest out there. And I hope they hear the gospel this morning as these speakers ring out. There is a massive harvest out there. And the good that God is working is not for us to just be us again. For us to just keep our little circles again. For me in my home group and my friends and my church that I go to on Sundays. That's not what God is doing in His church. The new garment is so that we can go out and declare the authority of the The new wine is for the church to walk in the power of God once again. So we wouldn't just be caught up in the religion and just doing the same things we always do every week and there's no change. No difference. There's no one. I can't go on in the old garment. I can't go on in the old wine skin. I'm sick of the old wine. And so for us, The garment, Jesus later in the book of Luke, he said there, Luke 24 verse 49, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. It is the garment that God wants to clothe his church with. His garment speaks of the authority and the favor of God upon his church. And when the world looks at, it, at God's church, they don't see it just as another institution, but that the church would walk in the power and the authority of God. If you think of Joseph's coat that his father gave him, I went and read up in, in, the, in the tradition and just the history behind the context of Joseph's cloak. Joseph's cloak designated his father's authority and favor. And that's what God wants to come and do. He wants to put the cloak of the power of the Holy Spirit, God's authority and favor over his church. Are you willing to let go of that old garment, man, and embrace the new garment that God has for us, that God is working in us? New wine speaks of powerful, impacting, life-changing presence of the Holy Spirit in the church. Not just a great coffee, but people's lives radically turned around. Salvation. People getting saved at the hundreds. We've got ample parking, guys. <laughs> Let's not hold on to the old wineskin, please. It's my prayer. Isaiah 64. I've been praying this daily. Oh Lord, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, and that you would set these twigs on fire, that your church would burn with the fire of God once more. Our desire is not to go back to where we were. Just going through the routine and the normal things of everyday church. God is doing something new. God is doing something fresh. And He's using these circumstances that His church is going through 
enemy has intended it for evil, for evil to harm God's church, but God is using it for good, and he's clothing his bride with a new garment. He's giving his bride a new wine skin. Many of you would, would remember when you got saved, how on fire you were for God, how you used to long to go to church meetings. You went to home group, you went to prayer meetings, you went to Sunday services, you went to all three services, and somewhere along the line, it's the wineskin that sets out. Once upon a time, your wineskin was new. Once upon the, a, a time, the wine was new. But over time, those things have become tradition, have become religion, and have just become motion that you go through. At one point at one point in time, and it worked at one point in time. But God says, you have now been stretched out. And the wine has become old. I want to give you a new wine skin. I want to give you a new wine skin. Spirit of God, we need you. Come fill your church. We desire a new wine skin and the wine of the Holy Spirit. We're tired of walking in this world with an old garment, dusty, old. Why don't you come give us a new garment? Clothe us with power from on high. A garment of authority. And when you sent out your disciples, you gave them authority to cast out demons and to heal the sick. Let your church walk in the authority of the king of the kingdom, the victorious king. Come, Lord. Here we are. Here we are. Your church. Have your way. We want to yield to what you are doing every day. Not just now. Tomorrow morning. God, give me the new garment. Turn me into a new wineskin. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I pray for a thirst that is unquenchable in us, Lord. A hunger and a desire to just throw off everything that's mundane and tradition. Let us hold on to your word for dear life. Let us not hold on to anything else but your word. We won't let go of your word, God. But we want to, like in Mark chapter 7, you said to the Pharisees there, you nullify, you make the word of God void by holding on to these traditions of yours. Let us let go of traditions and hold fast to what you say to us. And it's, it's, the, it's the, the written word of God but it's the lame word of God, the now word that is a revelation word by the Spirit of God that leads us in this season. It's not just the, the knowledge, the head knowledge holding on to, to the word of God, but it's the revelation knowledge of holding on to the word of God. It's not wisdom of men we hold on to, but it's the wisdom of God we hold on to. We pray this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord grant you his peace. In abundance. We see you next week, same time, same place.